cool name. Thanks. Why did you call yourself Corn? Oh, it's a funny story. When I was a kid, oh, I think it was like 15, 16, I was at uh, a party in Bakersfield. It was just like all just the weird kids and stuff in town. And uh, these two homosexual guys got really drunk and they jumped up on a table. And they started talking about how they had sex with each other. I guess one guy was doing something to another guy's butthole with his mouth. <laughs> and the guy blew diarrhea all over his face. And when he opened his mouth, he had a corn kernel on his tongue. Oh. <laughs> so you just, you just went, this is a great name for a band. No, I didn't think of that at, at the time. What I did is, like, everybody was at that party for the next year. Mm. What if I'd see them, I'd walk them, I'd go, corn, and they go, shut up, man, because the, the, the story was so disgusting. And I had a friend that actually, whenever I said corn, he'd throw up because of that. Oh, no. Yeah, really. But now he's probably smiling when he hears that. Oh, something. yeah, now he is. But yeah. um, I was just thinking, trying to think of a name, and mm. the whole band was sitting around, and I just was all... It just popped my head off. We called the band Corn. Oh, you know, yeah. And I mean, then, it's a good, you know, you remember that name, Corn. It's short, you know, Corn. It's corn. Oh, just, yeah, that's what I thought. It's corn. <laughs> it's just Corn. You like Corn. <laughs> <laughs> Not no more. No more? You eat too much? <laughs> oh, yeah. If you oh. are Corn, you can't eat it, huh? Uh -uh. Like can't eat it. Right. It's funny, like, it, <laughs> it, uh, like catering and stuff, they always, on, our, on the thing, they always put Corn in those, all these Corn jokes. Oh. Corn everywhere. So oh, I, okay. I pretty much... Don't like corn no more. Thank God I'm not wearing yet. <laughs> so one of the tracks on the album is called Adidas, which mm -hmm. means all, all day. All day I dream about sex. Do you dream all day about sex? Yeah, every man does. Every man. Every man I does. Every woman. <laughs> every woman too. I mean, it's it's it's. <clears throat> I can't remember the actual statistics on it, but they say you think about it okay, every like mm -hmm. at least once every minute, or just I mean flashes of it. Mm -hmm. Everybody, it's just our animalistic urges. Yeah, and, I mean, you, you like Adidas suits. And Adidas oh, yeah. Stuff. I love it. It wasn't influenced by that, that you went like, oh, I'm wearing Adidas suits? No, no, no. No, because, yeah, I mean, when I was a kid in high school, or even in high school, too, it's, and that's what we thought it stood for. Mm -hmm. I remember being a little kid, you were the coolest if you had Adidas shoes because it mm -hmm. stood for that. I never knew that, actually. Yeah, that. that's what we, we used to call it. I remember back, I think it was 1973 or something, mm -hmm. um, the Adidas Corporation held a press conference stating that that did not stand for that. Yeah. And if they found out I had a song about that, they'd probably cut me off, but hope they don't. Oh, they, oh, they, don't, they don't know, actually. <laughs> well, I, I'm, the, the LA office and stuff does, but I don't know, but actually, Adi Dosler knows. He'd probably I, be I pissed. Thinking, you know, with, with, with the video and stuff, with the crash victims wearing women's clothing and all that stuff, you know? And you asked once about it, you know, is that right? Mm -hmm. I mean, weren't they, like, kind of irritated with that? They said, hmm, I'm sponsoring those guys and I'm making a song. I'm, I don't know, they have a, um, like a... They do like stuff for entertainment, but they're basically a sports company, and I guess only the entertainment division just like they love it. Mm -hmm. They bought some of my suits, the, my sequin suits. Mm -hmm. They have them displayed at the at the office, so okay. but they dig what I'm doing. They say we've done just even more than running DMC did for them. So I know why. That's and pretty it, cool. I mean, looking at you guys, you don't really look like the whole band doesn't look like rock guys. You mm -mm. look like more, you know, individual, more little drummer, quite a little hip hop. You don't look like typical. Okay. I mean, Thank do you. you. Try not to look like that. Or no, I mean, this is how we look, mm -hmm. and we've been so for so long been so stereotyped into, okay, you're a heavy metal band, if you're rock mm -hmm. band, and trying to cross over alternatives, it just it would get pulled back and forth, and we're just trying to be ourselves. There's like five individual characters in Corn, mm -hmm. and while well, we all just do, yeah. Can you tell me what that's about? That's about when I was in high school, being in the Duran Duran, I was in Antillian, so the new romantic thing as much as I possibly could be mm -hmm. from Bakersfield, so it's probably half just whacked. So I used to wear makeup when I went to school and roughly long shirts and do all that, that, that whole trip. So they didn't, they, they, the Hicks didn't like that too much, the jock guys, so I was always called a faggot and picked on and even the teachers think I was gay. They even sent me to the gay counselor. And <laughs> no way. And the whole time through high school, everybody thought I was gay. And they thought I was in denial. I get girlfriends. They thought, oh, he's just trying to... Did you try to convince them that you're not gay? Yeah, well, no, I'm not gay. And um, I wrote that song just like uh, the feelings I felt because I walk around school and just get teased. Mm -hmm. And I, I came to the point where um, mm -hmm. I went out and, and, and experimented with homosexuality and found out I wasn't. Mm -hmm. It's all because those people always just on my back, you're gay, you're gay, you're gay, you're gay. I didn't know if I was gay. So I mean, at the end of it, I said, I'm just a fat guy, I guess. Mm -hmm. I didn't know. And I came to that point where I had to go find out. Mm -hmm. And I found out I wasn't. Mm -hmm. So the songs around that like that. Yeah, but you, you like to be different. Like, it wasn't to the point where you say, you know what, I'm just going to stop wearing makeup and cut my hair. No, I didn't want to do that. Uh-uh. Hell no. 
that's the way I wanted to be. And the Hicks, the Hicks didn't like it. Who cares? I just get beat up. Oh well. Yeah. Now, now look at me. Exactly. <laughs> I love going to Bakersfield. Seeing all those guys that pick on me, and I just don't even talk to them. Really. Oh, that's when I pull my stuck-up rock star attitude at, at those guys. Yeah. I just go whatever. I do that sometimes when I go back to Germany. Who are you? Um, and another song is called Kill You. Yeah. And it's apparently a tribute to your ex-stepmother. Uh, right? Yeah, ex-stepmother. Okay, hate that, that lady. No, I'll talk about her. I, <laughs> I love talking about how much I hate her. Why do you hate all, her that much? Because she was just a, an evil, like the, just the stereotypical evil stepmother. Oh, yeah. Just... I guess when my dad and her got married, um, I was living with my mom at the time, and I had a stepsister, Stephanie, and uh, they had their perfect little family. It was my stepsister, my dad, and, and her, and then um, I wanted to move in with my dad. My dad says, cool, move in, and so when I moved in, I broke up her happy little home, and she did everything in her power to get me to leave, mm -hmm. just like cruel stuff, like say one, I got sick one time, and she um, made me sit at the table, and she gave me this cup of tea, which she spiked with. Um, that uh, Thai hot oil. No, she didn't. Yeah, Thai hot oil, um, jalapeno juice, uh, just all this pepper. She wouldn't let me leave until I drink it all. Why? Because she's an evil what cunt. What did your father say? Huh? What did your father say? You he was pussy whip, basically. Mm -hmm. He just, he was in love with her too much. Sorry about that. Um, mm -hmm. uh, he just couldn't see it. That was his woman. He didn't, he just... Mm -hmm. I don't know, and I was very mad at him for that, but now he, he realized what happened, mm -hmm. and he hates her just as much, and he loves that song, too. That's cool, um, and play it to her second yeah. take. <laughs> but, I mean, it came to the point where I'd lay it, it, in bed at night just dreaming about killing her. Really? Yeah. It was that bad. It was that bad, and I had to sit. You got picked on, huh, growing up? No yeah, way. I was one of those kids that got picked on, like, the run. Yeah. It's one of those, you, know, you always see those kind of people. Know? Some people say, like, the more you pick, the more you, you drive to be successful, and so you show it. Yeah, so I try people. it. And I tried very hard. That's cool. I'm happy. So if life is peachy mm -hmm. now, what's the future? Well, the future for us is um, we're going back to America. We're starting a Lollapalooza tour. Oh, great. And that's going to be fun. We're doing that for two months. And after we're done with that, we're going to start our new album. Mm. And we're going to take six months off and do a new album. And then once that's finished, we're going to be coming back here doing probably a couple world tours mm. and doing it all over again. And uh, mm. I can't remember looking forward to it because we, we already wrote a song that's going to be featured in the Spawn soundtrack and uh, with, the, with the Dust Brothers. And oh. we found, I mean, it's going to be different, but not. So I'm looking forward to it. We're going to make a little change, but it's not going to be too much. Mm. That's pretty cool. So I'm looking forward to that. Oh, so life will keep on being peachy. I guess. Jonathan there talking honestly and openly.